Welcome to this presentation where we will deal with the turning operation, which is the one of the most important machining methods. The presentation is divided into five chapters. In the beginning, we will talk about what is turning and cutting forces. Then we will move on to what do I measure? And then why should we measure? And then later on, we will mention some of the KISA products that can be utilized for measurement and give you some specific cases where the force measurements are used in industrial applications. So let's start with what is turning and the cutting forces. Turning is, as I, as I said, one of the most important machining operations where the cutting edge is geometrically determined. So if you look to this video here, and we, starting with the M image here, you have this cylindrical part which will be machined. This is rotating and you have the cutting insert located on the tool holder and located in the dynamometer here. So if you look to this video, you can see that chips are formed. The diameter is decreased from a larger to a smaller one. The cutting motion is carried out by rotating workpiece, as you can see here, and the feed motion is carried out by the linear motion of the tool. Some main types of turning. External turning, where you decrease the diameter of the part to a certain diameter which is programmed. Spherical turning is where you generate shapes and radiuses and curves. Phase turning is where you are turning the face of the components. Boring is where you are turning the inside of a hole. Grooving is where you are generating grooves, either on the face or, as you can see here, on the external diameter. Parting off is where you are dividing the material into at least two parts. Hard turning is where you are performing those machining operations here, the turning operations on a hardened material with an HRC more than 40. Let's have a look on the forces, how they look like. Here in this picture, you can see that we have the tool holder, the feed direction is to the left, the workpiece is rotating here. The main force is the cutting force here, tangential force, represented as FC. Then you have the axial force, due to the fact that the insert is being fed into the material in the feed direction. FF, and then we have also the normal force, which is called passive force. If you look to the effective force, the active force, which is the vectorial summation of the cutting force and the feed force, and the resultant force, R, is the vectorial summation of all three force components. Let's have a look to a sinal curve of a cutting force, how it looks like. You can see the force in the y-axis here and the time on the x-axis. So, upon engagement with the workpiece, the force increases to a statical value and later on you have dynamical alterations during the cutting process and upon disengagement the force goes back to zero. This is the feed force and you have the passive force. One can conclude that in soft turning, the largest force is generally the cutting force, FC. In hard turning, the largest force is generally the passive force, FP. In hard turning, the feeds and depth of cuts are often smaller compared to soft turning. So there is a geometrical difference. Let's have a look to what do I really measure. Let's start with talking about how a machine works. This is again just a representative of a vertical machine. You have the slides here, the tool carrier part, which is what we call RAM. You have the tool holder and you have the round insert with the yellow circle here, as you can see. You have the spindle. The workpiece is in the shape of a ring located on the shoes on the spindle. So you can see that there are forces 
which are being sent by the drives from the linear drives and from the spindle drive. When the machine power is switched on, the feed and spindle drives start already applying force, as I mentioned, on the machine parts to keep the position coordinate with the accuracy configured in the system. And this force, of course, increases as the machine starts moving. So when the slide moves this ram, it applies force. And when the spindle rotates, the feed also applies forces here in different amplitudes and frequencies. And this will affect the cutting force forces and the cutting process. So when the cutting process starts, the measured force by the dynamometer, let us say in this case, it is placed on the ram close to the insert are being affected by the frequencies and amplitudes generated by the drives. The spindle drive affects directly both the dynamical and statical part of the force measurement. When we say about the statical part, it is often connected to the total stiffness of the system. Whereas the feed drive has an indirect effect on most of the statical part of the forces through electrical stiffness once the forces are measured in the dynamometer here placed. So let's look again on the cutting forces here. A measurement here, as you can see, the cutting force, the main force, tangential force, there is an alteration, there is always a minimum maximum value. We have the feed force, we have the passive force. You have the statical part of the force, and then you have also the dynamical part, as you can see here. So, when we look at cutting force, we know that it consists of the effects from chip formation, tool wear, surface quality of the surface that we are turning. So it can be dimensional changes, and it can be the roughness from the previous cuts, and so on the imbalance of the spindle and workpiece system, interrupted cuts, out of roundness of the workpiece, which is also affecting, of course, the imbalance of the spindle, microstructural effects of the material, machine mechanical and electrical configuration, external forces. It can be from pipes, from coolants, oscillations from external equipment, such as pumps or other machines beside. So, it is really important to understand the component of the forces in order to later on optimize the process. Why should I measure the forces? In order to evaluate and optimize the process through often tool wear, which is connected to the cutting forces, and thus decrease the manufacturing cost. To understand material behavior and machinability of different material types and of course as the next steps to optimize the process and to decrease the manufacturing cost again. To understand and optimize machine tools and in search as we have mentioned before the forces we are measuring are being affected by the behavior of the tools and the inserts and the machine itself. To correlate force signal to certain product quality parameters and to control the machines and processes by adaptive loops based on force shyness, which I will mention later on. With what I can measure then, when it comes to force measurements, there are two main technologies. One called PS electrical technology and the other is strain gauges with pros and cons. Let's have a look on the major ones. The PS electrical technology enables you to perform highly dynamic measurements so that you can also measure small force fluctuations with a wide measuring range and a high precision due to the linearity and hysteresis characteristic. Often the products have higher lifespan due to the fact that we don't have too much effect of, uh, from the creep behavior. And on the other hand, if you look to the strain gauges, they enable statical measurements during several minutes Temperature influences are easier to compensate and you don't need high insulating cables. So PS electrical effect, what is that? Upon application of the force, certain materials generate charge displacement. Here's a picture of a unit lattice cell, silicon oxide, unloaded condition, and when force applied, it generates charge displacement. 
The other property of the piezoelectrical effect is that, is that sensitivity is the ratio between the force and the charge generated, and it is often used while calibrating the components. There is a high linearity, and that allows measuring in different orders of magnitude. So if you look to the correlation between force and picacol on the charge, it is quite linear, and the slope is the sensitivity in this case. Let's talk more about sensitivity, and we say that we have a high sensitivity with the piezoelectrical technology. Let's have a look on this dynamometer here, in this video. You can see that this is a 9129, and it can measure up to 10 kN here. And we are placing an O seal on that, and that weighs around 0 0.33 gram. And if you look to this plot here, the force versus time, when we place the O-ring on this dynamometer, the force has a peak, and then we take it, we take it out, it goes back to zero. So we are measuring around 0.0032 nifton with a dynamometer which can measure up to 10 kilonifton. Thanks to the piezoelectrical technology, we have very high sensitivity. So we said that uh, we have the crystals that have this piezoelectrical effect, and the crystals are used on many inserts in KISA products, acceleration sensors, force sensors, pressure sensors, and it is in this way that uh, the layers, in this case rings, are cut in different directions and orientations from these crystals, stuck on each other and integrated in very stiff constructions in our dynamometers. We are going to mention mostly the stationary ones for turning, although rotating ones also used, which I will give some examples of. Some of the products which are available for cutting first measurements in turning. Type 9129 that I showed before in the video, as you remember. Then we have type 9119, and both these types are quite modular. So you can change the machine adapter site and also utilize different types of tool adapters which are available. And both machine adapters and tool adapters, we are covering today most of the standard ones that are available and used in market. Then we have also 9257, which are often used in machine tables, but can even be used in order to integrate this in the machine construction, which I will show later on. And on top of that, of course, we have ring sensors, which can be utilized both in machine constructions and tool constructions, which we will also touch later on. A typical measurement chain starts, of course, with a dynamometer, where you generate the charge, depending on force alterations and force measurement. The charge is being transferred to the data acquisition and amplification box with a high insulating cable, either three component or eight component, depending on what you would like to measure. And then the measurement is then later on transferred to your PC and to your software via Ethernet cable. The software, the standard software for cutting forces generally use DinoWare that is available in our product range. With what I can measure then, as I mentioned before, we are utilizing mostly stationary dynamometers. They can be integrated in revolver heads and machine rams. Stationary ones often integrated on the machine tables, although there are cases where those types of dynamometers are also integrated in machine construction. So when it comes to the revolver heads, depending on the construction of the revolver and the intention, different possibilities are existing. For auto diameter turning, for bore turning, as you can see, this image is from the data sheet of 9129. So, as we said before, different machine and tool adapters are available. This image is just a picture from the data sheet of 9129 showing different types of machine adapters here, the dynamometer and the tool holder adapters, which, as I said, exist for different uh, types. 
some of the important parameters. Let's start talking about low pass filter. What is low pass filter? Low pass filter is the filter that enables you to measure and analyze the low frequencies and cut away the high frequencies. So using low pass filters can be done in the charge amplifier, analog filtering, it can also be done digitally in your post processing. And the advantage of doing it in the digital in your post processing is that then you don't lose the information that you have in analog signal so that you can analyze and make filtering later on. So let's have a look to the cutting force measurement here. X-axis is the force measure at the time, sorry, and the y-axis is the, the forces. As you can see, we have three force components with some noise due to the many reasons. And when you apply low pass filtering, you can get rid of the high frequencies. High pass filter is the opposite of low pass filter. High pass filter enables you to measure and analyze high frequencies and cut away the low frequencies. Low frequencies can be, for instance, drift over longer measurement time, as you can see here. You can either choose a shorter time constant, it's basically a high pass filter, or you can do the high pass filtering, for instance, digital in post processing. And the only disadvantage is that the analog amplifier circuit may get overloaded. But what happens when we make the uh, high pass filter then on a signal having a drift? And you use the right frequency while filtering, then you can get rid of the drift in this case. Let's talk more about the reasons for drift. Basically, there are three. It can be electrical drift of the amplifier. It is often stated in the data sheets of ampli amplifications and amplifiers. There is a limit in picocoulomb second. So if you have a drift, you can start by just checking the value in your, in your amplifier and then ensure that, uh, that you, you are within that limit. It can be insulation drift because of the sensor and cable insulation, which is connected to the resistivity of the system, or it can be a thermal drift. When it comes to the insulation drift, as we said before, when the total resistance is smaller than a value, the sign starts to drifting. Often the connectors are polluted. That's why the resistance is reduced. So, Cleaning of the connectors should be the first troubleshooting action. If it doesn't help, the device must be repaired. Never use breath or compressed air from a pneumatic system to clean the connectors, as such systems may contain oil, dust, or humidity. Always use the Kistler 1003 cleaning spray. So, thermal drift, of course, Heat is involved uh, during cutting process, and then the heat is, is traveling through the tool and the dynamometer, and it is causing uh, some expansion in, in the metal, and that's what, one of the main reasons. You can utilize coolants to get, rid, to get rid of that and decrease it. Or what we have done here is that we have optimized our, our dynamometer design. Here is that picture. You can see that we have the cutting force measurement, Comparison between two dynamometers, the dark blue is 9121, the old model, and 9129 is the new model, as you can see with the light blue. As you can see, there is a drift in the old model. And the standard design of the old design was that the ring sensors were located, as you can see, and preloaded vertically. While in the new model, the sensors are preloaded horizontally, as you can see to decrease the effect of the thermal expansion and thus the drift. Let us move on to the last chapter where we will give some cases when it comes to the industrial applications. When it comes to the industrialization, there are three main challenges. The first challenge is the integration of force sensor on the manufacturing equipment. So we have to choose mechanically and electrically robust system that can be controlled and calibrated without disturbances to manufacturing execution. When we say manufacturing execution, it can be the tool changing, the motion of the slides, the, mo the movements of the robots in and out of the machine, and so on and so on. So the system should not disturb and interfere with such execution. 
steps. And the second challenge is, of course, to develop the know-how, which is the correlation between the machine and process parameters and important key performance indicators of the operation. And this includes, of course, the part quality parameters through measurement. So once you build that relation, then, then you, you know exactly what you measure. And the last step is, of course, the connection of the force signal to the machines and programming of the machine for monitoring and for intelligent machining, which I will give one example on. So let's start with the challenge one, to integrate force measurement. Often, often is, as I said, it's the main challenge. The picture that I will show here is a schematical presentation of a case where there are two force measurement systems located in a machine construction in different positions. So we have the horizontal slide again, we have the turning ram, and then we have the dynamometer located, integrated here, presented as the blue rectangular, as you can see here. And then we have also force sensor also located on the tool holder, very close to the insert here. So we will get one measurement from dynamometer and we will get one measurement from the force ring sensor. This is in order to understand, do we really need to be very close to the insert? Then we will have problems with the cables and so on. And the answer is no. Sometimes you do not need to. As you can see here that uh, the force measurements in orthogonal directions of x, y, z in the measurements from dynamometer is quite identical to the measurements that you get from x, y, z from the force sensor here. So inbuilt and well calibrated dynamometer in machine construction can measure details as good as a, as good as a sensor integrated in the tool holder. Then the next challenge is the machine connection. We have our measurement chains as we said before, different depending on the different types of data acquisitions and amplifications that are chosen, but we can utilize our analog signal connect to connect to directly to our machine via fast NC or PNC IOs. You can also utilize an industrial uh, amplifier like 5073. Or what you can also do is that you can connect to the machine a digital signal through industrial amplifier 5074 and the protocol Profinet in this case. So you have different options. So now we have connected the machine. The integration is, is also not disturbing the manufacturing execution. And the next, next step is to understand and use that signals in the machine. So this is, a, this is an ex example where the connection was done analog through the fast NC IOS to the machine. So when it is done proper, properly, for instance, we have chosen two force components to work with, and we also need an output signal to control the amplifier to switch on and off. And they are assigned analog, as you see, input one, analog input two, and the output here. So that can, that can be seen in the Siemens wheel here. And the forces or the sinus can be traced and scaled also in the Siemens uh, unit system. And you can also make your own uh, experiments and, uh, and analysis by saving the measurements through IPL trace here and again in the CMS control. And then later on now it's time to make some programming. This is only one example on how you can utilize synchronous actions. It's an advanced programming language in, uh, in, uh, in the end scene. So what we do is that we first start filtering the input signal, which was, if you remember, input one. Now we dedicate it as fx and assign it to any parameter r25. And within, with this equation here, we are making filtering a moving average. And the smaller the value, the stronger the filter is. So the summation of these two parameters should be one. You can do the same thing in other signals, of course. And here is, let us say, if it is the f zeta. Then you need to, to reset the amplifier, start and, and stop during and after the measurement. And uh, you can utilize this commando here. And you may need timer due to different uh, programming options later on, where you put on a reset the timer here. 
So then let us make a very simple condition, tool condition monitoring. As you can see here, we assign R51 a limit, which is 100 Nifton, and we tell to the machine that once the force value in F zeta direction goes over 100, give an alarm, and the machine will do that. So we build a very simple condition monitoring and tool wear alarm with the four signs. Let's look to case two. As I told you, rotating cutting genometers LCD is often used for milling, drilling, and grinding operations and so on, but in this case, it's utilized for turning. It is integrated, a custom-made solution in the spindle of a machine here, which is used for turning, so the tool holder is here actually, and the part is here, which is rotating. Otherwise, as we said, RCD, for instance, on a milling speed, it looks like this, as you can see, with the milling tool and the RCD. In this case, the left side here, it is a custom-made solution, as I said. The RCD is integrated in the spindle. Sensor integration, as I said, depending on the, the design of the spindle and the force, the forces. Here is another example. You have the spindle and the spindle housing. And after careful examination, it was found out that the forces are going through this plate and force sensors. Four of them are located between these two plates in order to capture and measure the forces on the spindle and the machining part here. So that is also another possibility. When it comes to the integration of the sensor, this is another example from Star Micronics here. As you can see in these machines, there are different types of tools and tool holders in different positions. And the possibilities are, as I said, also quite many. You can utilize dynamometer and place your tool holders on top of that. Still, you can measure the forces during machining. You can utilize ring sensors on your machine and components, and even on your tool holder, as you can see here. The ring sensor is integrated on the tool holder itself. And the last example is from Combifin technology, where it was intended that to change the process from the old one, which was the grinding and measurement, to hard turning and finishing and measurement in one machine. Of the parts, as you can see, with high tolerance demands, with the surface roughness less than 0 0.05 and the cylindricity less than 0 0.01. And the force measurement system was integrated in the machine, as you can see here. And the force measurement was directly connected to the machine, in this case, for intelligent machining and in-process compensation of some parameters. As you can see that the achieved surfaces are then within the limits. I really hope that you have enjoyed the recording and if you have further requests or questions, please feel free to contact our local colleagues. Thanks a lot. Thank you.